Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. A couple of days ago, you probably saw my video looking into FreeSync on NVIDIA GPUs after NVIDIA opened up support in their latest drivers. There was lots of good feedback to that video, which is always nice, but there were a couple of questions and comments that I thought were worth addressing in a separate video. So here I am responding to a small selection of comments. And I guess, well, let's get straight into it. So the first comment we have here is from Mobius2K. And they said, so flickering and other issues were just lies. Great. Um, I think this was one of the top upvoted comments and it is definitely worth discussing. The flickering and other issues were lies in the sense that Nvidia portrayed these problems as major issues with the FreeSync monitor ecosystem, when actually it's only a very small number of monitors that have these problems. I don't think they explicitly said this, but it was definitely presented in a way that suggested the problems were inherent to the Adaptive Sync ecosystem, hence the need for NVIDIA's magic god tier G-Sync implementation, and hence the need for G-Sync compatible certification. And that's what I didn't like, because there are plenty of FreeSync monitors that work fine and are just as good as G-Sync monitors, really. But it's also important to note that there are some monitors out there that genuinely do have flickering and blanking issues with Adaptive Sync enabled. There aren't many monitors, but some early models in particular did have issues. I don't think these crappy defective products are indicative of the overall FreeSync ecosystem, and certainly anyone that has a monitor that experiences these issues should return it as defective. It's also kind of funny to me because there are some G-Sync monitors uh, that have flickering issues in some circumstances. The Acer Predator X34, for example, is technically a 60 hertz monitor that can be overclocked to 100 hertz, and there were some reports around launch that some models exhibited flickering when overclocked to 100 hertz. Again, this was a problem with some models of that monitor. It had really nothing to do with G-Sync. So another comment here, of course it would only work with Pascal or Turing since they are the only ones they sell. Luckily for the surplus of Pascal stock, otherwise I'm sure they would advertise this as a Turing feature. Um, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if NVIDIA were restricting FreeSync to Pascal and Turing for marketing reasons, but the real reason is that Pascal cards were the first to support DisplayPort 1.2a. Maxwell also technically supports Adaptive Sync without a G-Sync module and does so in laptops, but desktop Maxwell cards don't have DisplayPort 1.2a, which is a requirement for Adaptive Sync, hence why Pascal and UP are the only cards that officially support it. So Peter here has asked this question, Tim, did you consider that FreeSync monitors could get more expensive because Nvidia might charge a license fee for each sold FreeSync monitor, which Nvidia approves? It wouldn't be the first time that Nvidia does a scam like this. They did so for SLI. They made every motherboard company pay a license fee for SLI per sold motherboard which the customer who bought the motherboard had to pay. So it might be bad for AMD customers that NVIDIA now allows FreeSync to be used depending on whether or not NVIDIA charges for a license again. Um, yeah, this is something I've seen discussed a fair bit, and I think it's hard to say for certain what will happen. So, so far I haven't spotted any price increases for the 12 G-Sync compatible models, but I doubt there would be an increase to the price anyway, because most stock would have been already sold to retailers at the old price. So I guess the question is primarily whether new FreeSync monitors will cost more. So I sort of look at this from two angles. The first one is that a monitor doesn't need to be G-Sync compatible to work with NVIDIA GPUs. With this comments motherboard example, a manufacturer did have to pay NVIDIA to enable SLI support. So they either pay to have that feature or they don't pay and the feature isn't supported. But with the monitors, Adaptive Sync will support uh, NVIDIA GPUs or now work with NVIDIA GPUs whether the OEM pays for G-Sync compatible certification or not. So there's not as much, I guess, of an incentive to pay. So I'd expect that um, companies introduced, I guess, in producing budget or value products will not bother with the G-Sync compatible branding and just continue to offer those products with no price increases. The other angle is marketing. Some companies may wish to include G-Sync compatible branding so they can market their monitor as being G-Sync compatible. I expect there would be a fee involved, but I can't imagine the fee would be high enough to change pricing significantly. After all, if the fee was high enough that either the OEM's margins were reduced by a decent amount or the pricing becomes uncompetitive, I doubt the OEM with, would bother with the sticker especially because, as I just mentioned, it's not necessary to 
get G-Sync compatible certification to make the monitor work with NVIDIA GPUs. It's also not unusual for monitor OEMs to pay for certain stickers and branding on their boxes. I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I believe if OEMs want to use either FreeSync or the VESA Display HDR branding, there are small associated fees with that. And I'd be surprised if G-Sync compatible was any different. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out though, but my expectation is that monitor pricing will be largely unaffected, even if there is a license fee associated with the G-Sync compatible branding. So I expect that license fee would be certainly much, much smaller than the cost of buying the modules that we've seen across you know, the fully fledged G-Sync monitors. Richard O'Shea has said, uh, makes you wonder where the pressure to support FreeSync came from. I guess it came from the market. So much for walled gardens. Um, yeah, I think I think the writing has been on the wall for some time now. The FreeSync monitor ecosystem is far larger than G-Sync and has grown at a huge rate. So I think it's just got to the point where NVIDIA restricting buyers to just G-Sync monitors was working against them. Previously, there were benefits, I guess, to keeping NVIDIA owners locked into the walled garden, but it's now gotten to the point where NVIDIA GPU owners were stuck with just maybe 10% of the adaptive sync market, while AMD GPU owners could access the other 90%. In the budget market, I think this hurts a fair bit. You could pair, say, a $200 RX 580 with a $200 FreeSync monitor and get a good experience, but NVIDIA owners would be left spending $100 to $200 more to get the same adaptive sync experience, and that's a lot of money for a budget gamer. So locking it down, I don't think was a sustainable approach. Then there as well was the threat of Intel GPUs around the corner. Intel are supporting FreeSync starting with Gen 11 integrated graphics, and presumably their discrete GPUs will support it as well. So in just a few years, NVIDIA would be battling both AMD and Intel in the adaptive sync market, and that's not a winning strategy. So really, they had no choice but to enable free sync support. So we had one commenter here bringing light to the fact that only Windows 10 is supported with uh, the NVIDIA FreeSync VRR, um, no support for other OSs, including early versions of Windows. And yep, I've seen this is the case. I don't think there would be any technical reason why FreeSync wouldn't work on old operating systems. So I guess it's a bit disappointing that's locked down, but at the same time, a lot of other gaming features are also restricted to Windows 10 like DirectX 12. So really, if you're a gamer, you probably should be running Windows 10 anyway. We had another question here from Alan. Does DP to HDMI adapter work? Um, pretty simple answer to this one. No, it doesn't work. I tested it and many other have as well and confirmed that this isn't possible. So unfortunately, all those FreeSync HDMI monitors simply don't work even with an adapter. One comment here says, I have had an AOC 1440p 165Hz G-Sync monitor for about eight months and it has started blanking lately. Not sure what to do about it. Um, yeah, as I've mentioned a few times, any blanking issues are directly related to the monitor itself, not FreeSync, Adaptive Sync, or G-Sync. So if it's looking like your AOC monitor has become defective, I'd recommend RMAing it. And luckily, because it happened within eight months, it should still be under warranty. So we sent here posted a long comment. I'm only gonna take one excerpt of it and respond to it. So I'll just read it out here. Um, you seem to think FreeSync and G-Sync VRR are equals, that one is as good as the other. While theoretically true, that is not true in practice. The VRR range for FreeSync monitors is all over the place. Sometimes the FreeSync VRR range is so small it's almost useless. G-Sync also offers the exact same and very wide VRR range. There's also the matter of input lag, where real G-Sync monitors are consistently the fastest. FreeSync monitors can be anywhere from great to terrible. This must always be front and center when discussing FreeSync, G-Sync in the abstract. Unless the customer is willing to look through very detailed reviews, which measure VRR range and input lag, which don't exist for every monitor, you can't say both VRR technologies are equivalent. In practice, G-Sync is often better and never worse, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, this is something that has come up in a number of comments and a number of articles, discussions, all that sort of thing. But in my opinion, when discussing FreeSync versus G-Sync, I think it's important to split up the technology with talk of the validation and branding. In terms of the technology, there's very little difference between FreeSync and G-Sync. Both allow a monitor to vary its refresh rate in sync with the output rate of the GPU. Both allow for features like low frame rate compensation. There are some minor differences. FreeSync, for example, supports output over HDMI and G-Sync supports variable overdrive. But the key aspects of the technology are basically functionally identical. And as an aside, I don't agree that G-Sync monitors are consistently the fastest in terms of input lag. Personally, the fastest monitors I've tested have been FreeSync monitors. Anyway, where the differences come in is simply in what each company allows to be branded as either FreeSync or G-Sync. In other words, what passes the validation process. G-Sync validation is significantly stricter than FreeSync. It requires support for things like LFC, 
It requires wide refresh ranges, good input lag, no technical issues, and so on. G-Sync is more a brand that tells you overall whether the display is delivering a good experience. FreeSync branding, on the other hand, isn't really concerned with monitor quality. It's simply an indicator to let buyers know that the panel supports adaptive sync. If it supports adaptive sync, it passes FreeSync validation. Now, I don't necessarily think either approach is right or wrong. The G-Sync badge is guaranteeing a certain level of quality. However, that comes at a significant price, and there's no technical reason why a FreeSync monitor can't match a G-Sync monitor in terms of functionality and validation. It's just that with a FreeSync monitor, producing a quality display is up to the monitor manufacturers, while with G-Sync, it's a requirement to get certified. The end result is for equivalent displays, FreeSync monitors can deliver an identical experience to G-Sync if the monitor OEM wants to, and at a lower cost. However, the trade-off is entry-level monitors will have FreeSync branding and won't be very good. I also don't think that having crappy entry-level FreeSync monitors with narrow refresh ranges is a bad thing. These are monitors that previously wouldn't have supported adaptive sync at all and certainly wouldn't pass G-Sync validation. So including FreeSync is a value addition at little cost. Sure, I guess the experience might not be great, but for entry-level monitors, we're talking about, well, we're not talking about the difference between FreeSync and G-Sync. We're talking about the difference between FreeSync and no adaptive sync. And personally, I choose to have adaptive sync every time, no matter the refresh range. So I think most buyers should look at G-Sync versus FreeSync in this way. G-Sync, well, it's kind of, I guess, a sticker that certifies an experience. If you can't be bothered doing any research into what monitors are good and don't want to read reviews and that sort of thing, you can buy a G-Sync monitor knowing that generally you'll be getting a decent product. But you'll pay for that privilege. I guess it's similar to buying, say, a pre-built system from a vendor like iBuyPower. They're certifying everything works with your new PC, but you'll pay more than researching and building it yourself. Whereas FreeSync, that's just a sticker that tells you a monitor has adaptive sync. It's not certifying an experience. It's merely telling you that a certain feature is supported. Some FreeSync monitors being crappy isn't a failing of the brand for not having tight validation processes because it was never really the point of FreeSync and isn't the intention of the sticker. Like I guess the HDMI sticker tells you the monitor supports HDMI, the FreeSync sticker tells you the monitor supports adaptive sync and you'll need to research which monitors are actually worth buying yourself. And yeah, the final comment I wanted to address here is from Omer. Uh, they say, a monitor also automatically fails in videos testing if FreeSync isn't enabled by default in the monitor settings. And yeah, that's an interesting thing to bring up. I suspect a huge number of FreeSync monitors have failed validation for failing two things, not supporting low frame rate compensation and not having FreeSync enabled by default. At a guess, I'd say at least half of all FreeSync monitors, if not more, don't support LFC, and then another chunk of monitors that do support LFC ship with FreeSync disabled by default. Of course, in both cases, the monitor may support adaptive sync just fine, but I guess with those rules, you can see how out of 400 monitors tested, so many of them would fail. Um, yeah, so I guess that pretty much is it for this video. Hopefully this has addressed a few outstanding questions and concerns with FreeSync on NVIDIA GPUs. I'm definitely glad to hear that most people have managed to get their FreeSync display working with no issues. I think we all expected that to be the case, but it's good to get confirmation from you guys in the comments. As always, you can subscribe for more display testing. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our monthly live streams and exclusive Discord chat. I'll catch you in the next one.